What's up, book brothers? Well, Microsoft is experiencing an outage right now, and guess who is responsible for that outage? Not this guy. But I wish it was this guy. Companies like Microsoft, they have a big part to play in the world, socially and economically. So taking out a company like Microsoft is really a big deal in the world of hacktivism, activists, bad actors, and threat actors and advanced APTs. So if you're in that world, you're probably <laughs> clapping your hand right now. So risk is a key factor to consider when protecting a company like Microsoft against these type of things from happening. You'll never really know the truth about what happened because Microsoft will tell you, which I've read in the news, that this was not a breach, this was not a hack, this was an outage due to a, a hardware or a software malfunction and a fix has been deployed. So how do you address these things? Exactly how Microsoft addressed it. They're not gonna say that this was an APT or this was some sort of a breach of confidence on their behalf because they don't wanna look bad in the news. And that's what these companies do. They don't wanna look bad in the news. So you have to really take that with a grain of salt <clears throat> and just put the pieces together for yourself. What does that mean? Well, you have to do your research. Microsoft, they have a large footprint across the globe. They have their hands in so many businesses. The airlines, flights are halted right now. Banking systems are halted right now. Uh, there's a ton of uh, like liquor stores, small mom and pop stores who use Microsoft services that are halted right now. So this is actually a bad thing in the sense that now the APTs, Advanced Persistent Threat Players, and the bad actors and hacktivists and your, just your do, do no gooders. Is that a word, do no gooders? Just your generally bad IT folks out there in the wild. Now they have sort of a playbook, right? You take out a company like Microsoft, take out a company like Amazon, one of these large cloud provider or services provider companies that has their footprint all over the globe and the United States, primarily in the United States. If you take out one of these companies, you could potentially halt the economy. You know, if you take out the right service provider at the right time, and that's what Microsoft is. Microsoft is a service provider, service provider, right? Let's just say you can take out Microsoft and an uh, AWS. That would be a large, that would be a huge feat, but it, it's possible, you know, if you attack the right systems, you should be able to take out, you would be able to take out, if you're able to do it, the entire economy, the entire economy, the United States economy, you bring it to a halt. I mean, <clears throat> this is like a playbook for someone in the future to, to look and say, hmm, if you take out Microsoft or, or if you take down Amazon, if you just shut down one of those services, you will really do some damage to the economy, if that's what you want to do. So security is paramount. Risk management is paramount. You have to live by a few, a few strategy bylaws in order to get past a situation like this. Know yourself, know your environment, meaning know, know the data that you're protect, trying to protect, know the people who, who you're protecting, know the people who you're trying to keep out. So you have to reduce your attack surface. You have to basically operate in excellence at all times, right? There has to be a, a sense of urgency when it comes to operational excellence. That's huge. And reducing your tax attack surface, in Microsoft's case, how can they do that? I don't know. 
I really don't know how they can do that, but because they're just all over the place. So it's hard for them to reduce their attack surface because they have so many publicly accessible applications. And a lot of those applications are high risk applications. So they have a multitude of things going on at the same time, which puts them at risk. Um, and then what else do you do? Uh, so there's a ton of different strategies you can do. Align yourself to your vendors and make sure that you know what they're doing and that they're keeping themselves safe because all we know, this could have been an attack that was sort of um, addressed through a vendor, a third party vendor providing some service to Microsoft because Microsoft is so large, something's gonna slip through the cracks. So align yourself to your, your businesses and vendors properly and make sure that they are aligning themselves to the same frameworks and governance principles that you live by. Could have been Microsoft, you know, they have to follow a lot of different regulations because they're involved in so many different spaces. And when you are involved with so many frameworks and regulations, it's kind of hard to keep up with all of the things that change. And I wouldn't be surprised because there's a regulation that recently changed where organizations have to make public uh, breaches that has a reasonable uh, amount of, that would have a reasonable impact on, on the market value of that organization that might impact the actual investors like yourself and myself. I invest in companies like, I don't invest in Microsoft, their stock is too high. But if there's a breach that might have a reasonable impact on uh, market value, then they have to like disclose that information to the public. In a case like this, this would have a, a, a huge impact on Microsoft's uh, stock value. Who knows? Well, I don't know if their stock is right now, but uh, an impact like this could definitely drive the price down. So, but then Microsoft has so much money, they could report that this issue was a non-issue, that it was just a software defect, that it wasn't a breach. And you wouldn't even know that it was an actual breach or, or something caused by maybe somebody, a disgruntled employee intentionally um, introduced some uh, failure default or some executable into it and to the environment to cause this to happen. Who knows? You'll never know. But risk is paramount. Risk protecting your assets is, is, is paramount. Aligning yourself to your to your bit to the businesses and your customers and aligning yourself properly to your vendors. That's extremely important. Or else something like this will happen to you. So you have to take a certain approach when you're dealing with uh, something of this magnitude. So in the future, Microsoft, you need to take precautions, some new precautions to prevent against this type of incident. Now, you've, of course, you've got your incident response team probably going crazy. They're probably going mad right now. Somebody's, shoot, somebody's probably gonna get fired because how do you have an incident that takes down all of these different um, industries? Banking, airline industries, mom and pop stores. How does that happen? There should be some sort of system failover. And I know it only inf impacted like Windows machines, Unix and Linux machines were not impacted, but still, this is sort of a, this is a big deal. Something's gonna change. There's probably going to be a big press conference or in briefing in the coming days from Microsoft to address their shareholders. So there's definitely going to be more to come. But I would probably, I personally, I wouldn't believe anything that they say because they're going to, they're going to tell you and they'll tell you anything to make themselves look good and to make the situation not look as bad as it probably is. It really is given the fact that it impacted so many different industries. So let's look at the, uh, the word of the day is, you take a two-phase approach to risk management. Risk management 
for control selection and risk assessment for gap analysis. So here's some examples of some of the more popular standards that are used for the purpose of risk assessment for gap analysis. You can't really find, you don't really know what, you'll never be able to figure out what every gap is. So there's gonna be gaps. So even if you follow some of these, like if you follow NIST publication 853, or if you follow ISO 27001, the NIST cybersecurity framework, or if you follow the cybersecurity maturity model certification standard or the payment card industry, that's PCI data security standard, or some other government uh, or industry specific standard. Even if you follow those to the T, you're gonna miss something. You can't account for every single issue as we have been made aware of this morning. You can't account for every possibility. It's virtually impossible. So I can't wait to see what Microsoft says. And I can't wait to see how they plan to address this. I can't really, I can't wait to see what the actual, what they say the issue was. Because the actual issue and what they say it is, that's gonna be two different things. So, number one book, bro. This is your geopolitical perspective for the day. Chill.